The Homeward Bound Prophecy Conference is almost sold out, but you can still be a part of this exciting event through our streaming option. Simply go to prophecywatchers.com, scroll down, and click on the bright blue streaming banner to register. 25 of the top prophecy teachers will be delivering 64 messages that you can enjoy in the comfort of your own home. As an added bonus, we are including 80 additional past conference messages for your enjoyment. That's 144 messages that are sure to enlighten your walk with Jesus. We're also going to throw in a one-year subscription to our digital magazine for everyone who registers. 144 messages in our digital magazine delivered to your inbox for a year for only $85. Go to prophecywatchers.com and register today. Welcome to the program today. My name is Mano Gonzalez, and I'm here with a very special guest, Jonathan Khan, who has a movie coming out. So welcome, Jonathan. Great to be with you. Talk about this movie, The, the Harbinger of Things to Come. Kind of give us a little update. Yeah, this, uh, the Lord opened the door for this to go out, I mean, across the country in theaters everywhere. I've never done something quite like this. Um, and this is going to be really like a prophetic explosion. It's the, it's the, you know, begins with the mysteries of the harbingers, but and then goes let, think beyond things that I've even had in any book. Um, what is happening now? I mean, wh what has been happening? Where the mystery is? Where we are right now? The signs that have come now. The 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 harbingers of recent times. Um, where this is all heading, where is it going, you know, um, uh, and what do we need to know for the future to, to stand regarding with what is coming? And also, is there hope? Um, this is for uh, not only for believers, you know, but it's also for non-believers, wake up call. So we're hoping, you know, uh, there's a there's a bit of great uh, swell of excitement, but we're hoping that people also bring unsaved people because it's really a wake up call of salvation on top of everything else. It's, you know, it, it's kind of, it's, 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 um, I would say, you know, I've seen it obviously, and it, it's, it ha it's mind blowing. It's, 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 it's powerful. Um, and there are things in there, um, that you're actually, you know, people are going to not just read about, obviously they've read about the harbinger. They're going to see it. They're going to see, th we, we found some foot, we found all sorts of footage of things that are of the signs, you know, and also there's something that I've held back on, um, really for for years, um, which I have never revealed um, in I mean, maybe it's, it may be one of the things we talk about, um, but it's it's uh, it's something they're actually going to see something prophetic. They're going to see. So so in any case, it's it's going to be all over the harbingers of things to come uh, in theaters all across the country on May 12th. It's a fathom event. So it's a one night event. So don't miss that. Mm -hmm. um, it's May 12th, uh, Thursday night. Um, and um, it will be, you know, after that, they will make it available for 30 days for churches that want to have their own event. So that will be possible, too. But but um, if they go on to um, Harbingers of Things to Come dot com, Harbingers of Things to Come dot com, uh, it'll take you right there. You'll see where it's playing. And you can also order, you know, you can reserve seats and all that. And you can even have it come into your area. If it's not playing, you can you can work at it. You can let them know and they can get it in there. So we're excited. And I believe um, I believe you have a clip of the trailer. So you can you can show that um, if, if you have that. Yeah, let's watch it. American 11, are you trying to call? Nobody move. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any move, you danger yourself and the airplane. Is there an ancient mystery that lies behind everything? From 9-11 to the plague of COVID-19 to the forces that are now transforming American culture and world civilization. Are the shakings that have come upon America and the world a warning, a wake-up call of something yet to come, and that leads to calamity?
You cannot be silent. You know what's coming. So as people can see, I mean, I've had a chance to see the full film, and the visuals are tremendous. Um, and it truly uh, powerful is a great word for this, especially I appreciate what you brought up as it relates to evangelism. I mean, really, you see that go through the entire film, the desire to see people uh, get saved and to really to come in, into contact with what God's word says. So one of the things that I think is important, uh, why now? Why bring this up now? Well, we are, we are watching America race away from God. I mean, we have never seen anything like we were seeing now. Um, we are we are in the you know in a, a certain point of the mystery or the template of judgment, um, and you know we need revival. Number one, I mean, without revival, America is gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, it, it it's not falling away from God. It is racing. It is plummeting. It's almost like every day we say, oh, we can't believe this is happening. So I believe the Lord wanted this out. I mean, again, we didn't. We it's going to sound strange that we didn't really plan it. it the doors just open. Um, and so I believe the Lord wants this out as a kind of, um, you know, a prophetic kind of sword, you know, kind of cutting through. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if you're an atheist, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're it's like, whoa, it's very it's very hard to argue, you know, when it's coming out like this. So I believe it's 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 to, you know, to uh, break through, you know, we're at a time where people are trying to cancel out the word of God. They're trying to uh, intimidate there and, and people are censoring and censoring themselves from even talking. They're afraid to say anything. But this is a this is a blast. I mean, this is a prophetic word blast. Um, and so so I believe it has to be now, you know, and we and we have to be bold. We cannot be timid. And this and this this is not going to be timid. You know, you know, in the, the fact that the fact that, that it's opened up for movie theaters to me is just amazing. I mean, that these are, on, you know, the, the movies that are playing Hollywood stuff, they're going to be playing this. You know, it's interesting as I was watching the film, it, it really. Uh, even though it was done in a modern context, you did such a great job of, of hearkening back to the prophets. And I found myself thinking of, of being a believer, you know, living in the time, you know, of Hezekiah or Isaiah and thinking about the way that the word of God was basically fallen in the streets, how people weren't listening. And yet here we have some of these same themes. Kind of talk about some of the same themes that you have. We're really living in biblical times. You know, people, people, people pray, say, I wish I could live in biblical times. Congratulations. You know, mm -hmm. you know, most of those biblical times are not when you're living in a Christian culture, which says, hey, that's great. You're a Christian. Those weren't biblical times. You know, Isaiah didn't live in that. You know, Jeremiah didn't live in that. Paul didn't live in that. They lived in anti-Christian times. So so we're replaying that, you know, um, and one of the things about the harbinger to set the stage for those who, you know, who don't may not know the foundation mm -hmm. Is that God? You know, give is He's consistent, and He He speak He works according to His word, and He is He is He He is um, consistent with His patterns and His templates, and so He gives in the Bible. There are specific templates that God uses when He warns a nation, when He when He when judgment is coming, and and that 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 template you know is a particular one, and you find it again and again in the Bible. Happened with ancient Israel um, when when it was judged. It happened with ancient Judah. Judea, and that is years before the nation's judgment or the or the great shakings that come upon it. There is a a wake up call. There's a there's a there's a shaking on the land, and it, and it happens always in the form of a strike, an enemy strike in the land. It happened in uh, with the northern kingdom in 732 BC. Happened in the southern kingdom in 605 BC. Uh, happened even in the time when the Romans came. There was first an initial thing. And then, and and so it's a strike. Now it happened with America on 9/11. We had our strike. We had our. Everybody was a wake up call. Everybody was. Everybody was rushing. If you remember, everybody was rushing to churches. You know, and it looked like there was going to be revival. You know, except it, three. It lasted about three weeks. And the reason is that that there was no repentance. There was no turning. There was no. It was you know. It was God bless America, but it wasn't that we have to change or anything. And so there was no turning. Without repentance, there cannot be revival. And so what's happened, instead of getting better, we got worse. You know, if you look yeah. at where we were at 9-11, even at 9-11, we we're saying, as Christians, we we're saying, you know, America's departing from God. Look at where we are now compared to that. So, the, and but that's all part of the mystery, too. And, and so what happened is there were nine, for those who don't know, there were nine harbingers that appear in the land um, linked to this strike, linked to the strike on the land. Um, and in the last days of ancient Israel, that warned them. Well, the the stunning thing is the same 
nine harbingers have reappeared on American soil. Some in, um, some in New York City, around where we are, some in Washington, some involving presidents, some involving uh, uh, ceremonies and objects, but they, they all have happened in specificity. I mean, exact, I mean, so the thing is, that's how it begins. Now, the thing is that it's warning America that we are in danger of judgment. And the thing is that, that they haven't stopped. You know, when I wrote The Harbinger, I knew that it was the beginning, it wasn't the end, because that's the beginning of something, it's not the end. And so I knew that one day, I mean, number one, it was gonna continue, and number two, that I would have to write a sequel, you know, because there was gonna, but I, I could never do that because it has to be the right time, it has to be the Lord. Um, so in, um, it was in 2019, I'm praying, Lord, what's the next book? You know, and I had in my mind, three books, you know, which one, Lord? And none of them, uh, because <laughs> it is time for, it is time you have to write the sequel because what's coming, I had a very strong sense that 2020 was gonna be a year of great shakings beginning on America and the world, America, but it started, and, and so, and, and it was gonna be a resuming of the, the harbinger, the dynamics of that, and I had to write to, that God's people would know. So I started writing it literally, uh, January of 2020, and about two and a half months later, it all came, and we were still in it, you know. And so, and so that that's how the Harbinger two came, you know, you know. But the point is that the Harbingers have not stopped, you know. That you know they they haven't stopped with the you know at, with 9 11. They haven't stopped with the, the with when I wrote the book, the Harbinger it has not stopped. It has continued warning, and it's not only that, but you know, but America, you know, the 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 footsteps that we are taking is a harbinger itself because we are following the footsteps of ancient Israel when when Israel was warned so it's not just the signs that happen you know that that warn it's America itself is replaying what Israel did when it was warned and it's actually defying God you know and more and more it's like every day so i believe it's all the it is if it was ever important it's all the more important now because really Everything is moving along in line with this and with a warning, and nothing's going the other way. I wish it would. I wish there'd be revival already, but it is going this way, and God is warning. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, because, you know, things that you bring out in the film, and you think about even the prophet Jeremiah that's, that's taking his message, and he's weeping over Jerusalem, and, you know, what was their... What was the leadership's response to Jeremiah? I mean, they threw him in prison. They, they disregarded the message. They disregarded... And, and really... You know, certainly Jeremiah weeps, but we also know that this kind of gives us an insight between ancient Israel and even today. What's God's heart for these harbingers? Is I mean, what's his what's his intention? Yeah, the the heart, God's heart. You know, it, it is written, He's willing that none should perish. His heart is salvation. His his necessity is judgment, but his heart is salvation. So just like the Lord, you know, he you know he wept over Jerusalem, same way. He said, "How often I would have gathered, but you weren't willing." What it's in it's in mercy that he warns. You know, if he didn't warn, it wouldn't be mercy because if, if there's no warning, there's no hope. You know, so you know, you know, it's just like you're trying to call somebody back, you know, and, and you you know, you whisper to them and they don't do it. So you have to shout. You know, you know, C.S. Lewis said God whispers in our joy, but he shouts in our pain. That's when he gets our attention. So, you know, he really did get the attention of America when 9-11 happened and everybody was God, 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 God. But it did, there wasn't that change, you know, and that's the thing, that's the only thing that can save us, you know. So, I mean, as a nation. So, yeah, I believe we are living in very biblical times, and um, the, the heart of God is like, the, as you said, the heart of Jeremiah. It's weeping for America. You know, the nation that was founded to be a city on a hill, was founded to be a light to the world. It was, it was, it was founded, I'm not talking about so much 1776, I'm talking about the very beginning when they dedicated, the Puritans dedicated America for the glory of God, and it, it has been blessed because of it. But you cannot be blessed and have all these things and then turn away and then war against God and expect those blessings to continue. You know that America was founded to become to be an an Israel, you know, after the pattern of Israel, not replace Israel, but but after the pattern of Israel, that that from the very beginning. And you know, and so we've been blessed with those blessings. But if we turn away from God, then the judgments or curses of Israel. That's what we're watching, and that's what the harbinger is saying. The same things that happen to Israel are are happening to us in all sorts of ways, you know. And so, um, yeah. So that so I believe the time is very critical. Yeah, you know, having read Harbinger too, as well as seeing now the the film, um, talk about the ways in which things that you were able to do with film versus just a book. I mean, it was extremely powerful. 
Yeah, the 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 well, first of all, you're going to you're going to see the harbingers. You know, it's one thing to read, nothing to see. Like, for instance, when we have some of these prophetic things where these these American leaders are mouthing these ancient yeah. uh, prophetic curses Amazing. or prophetic judgments, you actually see it. We found the footage. We found the archives. So you're actually seeing that um, you're you're also it's kind of taking uh, we're taking the, the, the viewer on a journey around America to the to where the where the keys are where the mysteries are from an island in Massachusetts Bay you know uh, the, go, the to the Statue of Liberty you know um, uh, uh, you know Washington D.C. so it, it's it's a it's an immersive thing um, and and so it's I think in some in some ways you know I guess that you 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 brought up the thing about the prophets you know and we read the prophets you know but back then they saw the prophets yeah so so it's kind of like you're seeing these things so I think it has some of that. That you're seeing these prophetic warnings and these prophetic revelations, I believe. But you're see, you're, and you can't like, are you can't say, oh, he's making that up, or they because you're seeing it, you know, or you, or you're seeing the footage of it, you know, including, you know, that that that. Well, I'll get to, but but certain things that I have not, that we've only put. I think if you saw it towards the end, there's there's this prophetic images that were that happened before everything happened. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's kind of mind blowing. It, it's I, I, I would describe it as chilling. I mean, you're sitting there watching this and you're saying, no way there's I mean, there's no way that there could be this many coincidences that are going on. I mean, it's just it's it's uncanny. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 that's how God is. And and I think, you know, it's the awe of God. I think sometimes we lose that. You know, we kind of get used to our own, own thing. And we also don't always see the big picture like, whoa, this is happening. You know, you can miss everything, you know, if you're just if you're just doing your own thing. But the Lord wants us to wake up. You know, you know, we have we have a culture that talks about being woke. Well, it's not woke, <laughs> but it's not. We are truly to be woke, to be awake. Yeah, and yeah, that's not the proper woke. Let's let's talk about as well. You in, in certainly in, in the first and second book. Um, you know, you you put yourself out there in describing the consistency of really the theological warnings that God does, but you also brought up the timing aspect, and, and you you made up some kind of some predictions based on Scripture. You know, let's talk about that. So there is in the in the first book, there's a chapter called Things to Come, mm -hmm. and I don't, you know, I, I write books, I don't often have time to read them, you know. So, but I had to look back, you know, when I was doing that, I said, whoa, 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 and it says, what happens to the nation? that you know has been warned but now goes away from god well it says it says you know shakings will resume upon that nation and and how will it come well in that chapter this is like years ago um what will happen is one of the nation will become divided you know we well america's never been so divided since the civil war as it is right now um it will be uh there'll be civil disorder disorder around you know we watched cities burn not long ago um but but so you know there will be the breakdown of infrastructure, breaking down of the of the of the society. Um, there will be decline and fall. Amer the American age will will ultimately come to an end if it does not come back to God. And we're watching all the signs of that. You know, Bible said one of the things says your enemies will rise up. We've got China. We have these other nations rising. You know, while that's happening. So um, also, it, you know, it talks about natural disasters and man-made disasters. Now, one of those things I know we'll get to it is, you know, even COVID-19, you know, what has happened on this, there is a link to all this. In fact, I'll, I'll mention, um, you know, that thing, you know, in, in the Harbinger, um, the, the question is asked, and in the in the Harbinger 2, it's answered, and then it's shown in the movie that, you know, the question is, how long is it from that first strike on the land to when the greater shakings come upon the land? Um, and we're not putting God in a box, he can do whatever he wants, but there is a pattern. And so, well, in the case of Jerusalem, it was the first strike came in 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon incursion. But then there was a there was a, a space of time, and then the greater shakings that fell upon the land came in 586 BC. Now put that together. How long is that? That's 19 years. Okay, 19 years. And the Bible makes a thing of it because it says that you know uh, Nebuchadnezzar in the 19th year he came upon the land. In the 19th year, you know, all the 19th year. That's when it all, all happened. Well, uh, what about America? Well, that first strike came in, in September 11th, 2001. So would the 19th year, could the 19th be a year when the shakings resume or pinpoint a year? Well, what is the 19th year? It's 2020. When did the shakings come? 2020. You know, for years, Mondo, I was always looking at that year before that. I was always looking at it. And, I, and again, if you look at the harvest, you'll see it, the question's asked, and it says, oh, it's about this long period. Always looking at the year and saying, is it going to follow this? Is it, and it is, and it did. It has. We're still in it. And and the other thing is um, that Jeremiah, when he spoke about the 
the shakings that were going to come in the 19th year of Israel, of Israel's judgment, uh, he mentioned specifically a plague will come upon the land in the 19th year. And now you think about the plague. It's called COVID and the number 19, 19. 19. So, so, and even there's so much to that. I mean, even we, and I, and that's one of the things like in the movie, I believe we're on, it's on a boat up the Hudson river to an Island there. Um, and there, there's a whole mystery there that goes back to Jeremiah linked to COVID, but not only the time, I mean, the, the year of it, but even the day that it made headlines all over America, that the first case came to America, even that day was prophetic. And even the places where it focused on, I mean, you know, it's, it's real mind boggling, but but you know God is in charge. No, uh, yeah, I mean, mind-boggling is, is so true. I remember even as things were coming up, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that, and I would look things up, and I'm like, that's exactly what it is, you know. Just the role of of the, the even the role of September 11th itself, the day. Yeah, well, you know, you, you know, Mondo, when I first wrote the Harbinger, you know, the first book I wrote. Um, there was a lawyer who had to work out the contract with a publisher, and she was an Orthodox Jew, you know, Orthodox Jewish lawyer, and and she said, if she she, 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 she had the manuscript, so she start, she's the first one starts looking at. It. She's, she says, I didn't believe, that. I didn't believe that. She says, I went right to the, I went right to the internet and checked out everything. She says, and it was all there. It's all, it's all there. It's all real. It's all real. Yeah. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a thing with that. You know, um, the, you know, for those who know the Harbinger, this is something when I wrote the Harbinger, I had no idea. But when, but the harbinger is based on the scripture Isaiah nine ten, mm-hmm. which is the scripture about when the enemy makes the strike on the land, and God is calling them, and they respond with defiance. They say the bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with quarries, so we're going to come back stronger without God. Uh, the the sycamore tree has been struck down, but we're going to plant the cedar or the aris tree. So there, it's a it's a defiance of God in re, and but it's speaking about that first strike, that first attack. Well. I didn't realize this when I wrote the Harbinger, but on 9, the morning of 9-11, all over the country, believers were opening up their Bibles to that scripture before it happened. And the, the scripture of the attack on the land before the attack on the land happened. How? Because there is, there is shows you the sovereignty of God. There's a Bible called the One Year Bible. And if you open up the one your Bible, it has a scripture for every day. Open up the one your Bible to the Harbinger scripture or the scripture of that first strike on the land, the strike of the enemy, judgment beginning. You'll see a date on top, and the date is September 11th. And the thing is, the, the thing is, the, the one year Bible came out in the 1980s. So that was already there. Or every year on 9 11, believers are opening up their Bibles to the scripture about the attack on the land and the beginning of it every year. From the 1980s, it was all there. And so, and then finally came that 9-11, they opened it up, and it happened. What's your thoughts on, um, you know, again, the, the, the amazing intricacy as well as the theological, again, we're talking about the theological consistency that God has, in that, you know, if he's going to be consistent in his character to judge Israel based on their lack of repentance in the same way we see it today, I mean, to me, I find it tremendous, and that's why I was kind of using the word prediction, is that we can, we, can great, we can predict and say, look, we don't know exactly when, but if America does not repent, it will be judged. I mean, we can say that with confidence, can't we? Yeah, yes, yes. I mean, that, that, that's true. And the reason why I kind of said it with a prediction, and you're right, um, is that, that on the web, like, like every month or so, people put up things on the web saying, oh, and it's to get, it's to get traffic, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's to get money for their site. Jonathan Khan predicts that in oh. May, this thing, so everybody open, what's he, you know, and we have to keep saying, we have to keep notifying them. So, you know, I don't make those predictions unless the Lord says, but yes, there is an absolute thing we can say, um, you know, and that is, and, 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 and also where everything is leading. It's not just saying if America, you know, uh, is, it falls from God, it's going to fall as a nation. Yeah. But we we have now have specific signs saying we're in that neighborhood we're we're in that 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 template you know we're yeah. in that thing so yeah if America does not does not return to God I have uh, America's lost the the American age as we most of us knew since the time we were born is going to be over it's going to be a different world um, so uh, so yeah and 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 um, so that is a very you know, it's just as precise as we say these warnings are, as precise as these, quote, coincidences are, that's as precise as we can say the, the Word of God is going to come true with that as well. Yeah. You know, I found it interesting that if people do look at Isaiah 9, 9 and 10, and they read really the base of what's going on here, um, 
If you read it into the next verse, it, it, when because they spoke, it says very clearly in the, in the greatness of heart, their arrogance, the way that the Hebrew reads, it's kind of fascinating, but in the largest of heart. But if you read it in the next verse, it says because of that arrogance, God raises up enemies against themselves. I mean, do you think that has any connection to where we're at today? Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go, if you look at the, as if you look at the next verse, it says basically saying, okay, you said you 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 made your defiance, and now this is what's going to happen, and now and, and and still it says the Lord's hand is not is not finished. You know, so interesting. I'll, I'll give you one example exactly with what. And now what I'm going to tell you is actually not in any book because it happened after even the last, the most recent book, the Harbinger Two, happened after happened this past autumn. Okay, and here here's the thing. It starts with one of the harbingers, which is the harbinger of the terrorist. And the terrorist, uh, you know, you know, the the reason why that's a harbinger is that is that when the attack came on ancient Israel, it wasn't just a it wasn't just an attack of an enemy. It was literally an attack of terrorism. Because the ones who did it were the Assyrians. The Assyrians are the inventors of terrorism. People don't realize that they they invented literally terrorism. And so every terrorist is kind of a descendant of the Assyrians. So so we so on 9/11 just like with ancient Israel the terrorist appears. We have the sign of the terrorist. Um and literally, you know, the, the terrorists who brought destruction to ancient Israel, they spoke Akkadian. Now they they carried out the attack in Akkadian. Well, you know, it's a dead language. We, no, no, nobody speaks it. But there is one language in the world that is the sister language of Akkadian uh that's virtually the same. It's Arabic. So, so now the, 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 those who carried out are literally carried out with the same, the same syntax, all that. So you have that, and they're from the same part of the world as the Assyrians. So literally to America in New York City. But now here's the thing. When that happened to ancient Israel, then you have this period of time, this grace period we talked about. You have the strike, then you have this years, mm -hmm. you know. And so for ancient Israel, it must have appeared that, hey, you know, the, the, that's not a problem for us anymore. We push, we, you know, you know, they're back. We're we're strong. It's never going to happen. With the terrorists is gone. You know, well, America did a similar thing. We said, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna, you know, but not by coming back to God. But we're gonna we're gonna take care of everything. So, you know, we went into Afghanistan, drove the Taliban out, drove Al Qaeda out, all that. But what the harbinger is saying, and 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 I bring this out in the movie, is that that if we if we don't come back to God, then all our attempts at trying to solve these problems are going to backfire. They're going to come back at us. And so the terrorists, so what happened with ancient Israel is, you know, they had this grace period, but then at the end, the terrorists returned. They returned. So I was wondering, so therefore I always wondered, Lord, and especially I specifically thought about Afghanistan because that was the first thing of driving them out. Is, are they going to return to Afghanistan? Are the terrorists going to return? Well, it was years and it just happened. It just happened that they did. Now, if you see that sign, it's not a good sign because that's what happened to ancient Israel. The terrorists actually returned, not just Afghanistan, they returned to strike the land. So, so, not it, so it's an ominous sign if you see that and it's happened. But there's more to it. That is that, when did that actually begin? Well, America actually, actually went to Qatar to have a conference with the Taliban telling them we are gonna pull out. You know, so you you're coming back, but don't do this, don't do that, whatever. Of course, so they so they they did that. That all the undoing of Afghanistan and all that happened on when the, when the Secretary of State arrived in Qatar. The day was September 11th, 2020. 19 years to the exact date began the undoing, the undoing, and the return of the terrorists. And it's not only the Taliban. By the way, it's Al Qaeda that returned to mm -hmm. Afghanistan. So, but on the exact 19th day, the, the day, I mean, you know, and that just happened. No, it's incredible. I mean, the again, these coincidences. I, 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 of course, as a Christian, you know, Proverbs 16:33. You know, we talk about the 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 throwing of the lot is in the lap of the Lord, and so we know that there are no coincidences in His kingdom. And, and again, what I find fascinating is it was just. To see God's heart that here these, these warnings are there, will you repent? And then, of course, as, as you see, and you mentioned in the other book, um, the defiance. Talk about the defiance. Yeah, well, well, you know, what happened in ancient Israel, you know, you'd think, you know, you'd think if, if you're humbled and, and you're, you know, God says, listen, you're in trouble without me, you'd come back to God. But they didn't. They made that vow. You know, you know, we're coming back stronger without you. 
And that's what led to their destruction. It was years later, but it still came. It didn't change. Um, well, America did the same thing. And really, if you think about it, uh, Bono, what the Harbinger is actually warning is Amer that not just about the signs, but that America will do the same thing, except for repentance. And that's what happened, because it's, it's about the defiance, not just about the, the signs, the defiance of the signs. So that's what happened. And so you so the first sign of that was really the, the very next day that that America you know, gathered on Capitol Hill. Now, now in ancient times, the leaders of ancient Israel, they made this vow. It had to be the leaders saying, this is what we're going to do. You know, we're going to define, and they sealed destruction. As you said, look at the next verse. They said, because you said that. Well, the amazing thing is, and when I first started seeing the signs of the harbinger, I didn't even know this was coming, uh, but that is that it happened at the end. By the way, you know, I'm seeing the tree, I'm seeing this sign, that sign. I had no idea. And then, and I, I know it's all Isaiah 9, 10, you know, only one day I'm typing into my computer for Isaiah 9, 10, and instead of getting the scripture, I get the the, the records of the United States Congress. Okay, and I said, whoa, what is this? <laughs> so what happens the next day after 9-11, America comes, the government comes to Capitol Hill, then it give the response to the world. Um, and so the one doing it is Tom Daschle, the Senate Majority Leader, the Democratic Majority, and he gets up, gives the response, and then he's at the end he says, there is a scripture there is a word from Isaiah that speaks to us now. He has no idea what he's doing. He has no, no idea, idea what he's about to do. A prophetic. But out of his mouth comes the ancient, ancient verse, uh, that the words that brought destruction to Israel, that the leaders of ancient Israel said after their attack, he says it, has no, Isaiah 9, 10, the harbinger scripture, has no idea what he's saying. He thinks it's a nice scripture to encourage them. He's identifying America as the nation under judgment. He, speak, he, speak, he speaks about the tree. He doesn't know there's a real, that day they're finding the actual tree that was struck down, the sycamore. And uh, he speaks, he says, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna put the stone and then it's gonna, two years later, it's gonna be fulfilled. He says, we're gonna put the plane. So it's all prophetic. And then, so, so, I mean, think about that. I mean, what are the odds of that? You know, I mean, you know what, you know, thousands and thousands of verses and he just happens to say it the next day. He has no idea. And not only does he say it, but then he says, he says, this Isaiah 9, 10 is what we America will do. Now he, now he didn't, he didn't, he didn't know he was saying it, but he said it. The very last words are, this is what we're going to do. Isaiah 9, 10 is what he's pointing to. What is that? I mean, and it was prophetic, you know, like Caiaphas. You say, well, how can he be prophetic? Caiaphas was prophetic, too, mm -hmm. because of his office. He's saying we are going to defy God in this, which is what happened. And that's what set the stage. And by the way, you know, and so you so think about this, Mondo. You know, he's saying this. He doesn't even know that the day before, all across America, the believers are opening up to that same verse. <laughs> and, and then... Not and, and we found the the archive footage where you're at, he's actually saying it, mm -hmm. but and then after that, you know, uh, three years later on the anniversary of 9/11, John Edwards, running for vice president, decides to make an entire speech based on one verse, Isaiah 9:10. The entire speech is Isaiah 9:10. The entire speech. I mean, and, and he's he's quoting from it. We're doing the sycamores. We're doing, no idea what he's saying on 9/11, but it didn't even stop. And, he, and even after again, when I wrote the Harbinger. It continued. Barack Obama comes down to the uh, ground zero and the tower is there. And that's one of the harbingers. And they're about to complete it. It's defiance tower about to complete. Interesting. I'll throw this in only because you only because you said it. And you went into the Hebrew. OK, it said, you know what it says? It says they say this in the arrogance or stoutness of their hearts. You know, mm -hmm. well, what, well, that word, one of those words for arrogance is the word Gadal, which you get the word Migdal, which means tower, mm -hmm. tower. So literally, you have a symbol of tower at ground zero. One of the harbingers were coming back stronger than ever. They're about to complete it. They give, they have the final beam. They they give it to the president. They put it in front of Barack Obama. They say, write words. He can write whatever he wants. What he writes in American vernacular, without knowing, he doesn't even know he's quoting anything. He he writes, he writes the a paraphrase of Isaiah 9:10 on the beam of the tower. And in ancient Israel, when the leaders said this and they um, sealed judgment, in Hebrew it was only eight words, eight words, eight Hebrew words. Isaiah 9, 10 is eight words in Hebrew. Barack Obama writes eight words on the beam. And the eight words match the eight words of the Hebrew that in the middle 
in the middle of his the center the center point of his eight words is he says we rebuild in the center point of the hebrew judgment words is the word nivna which means we rebuild and so here the highest words in america are the words of the harbinger defiance of god on the harbinger itself you know you, you know and, and there's no way obama is trying to fulfill this and he doesn't know about that. no they, none of them do but it's telling you something, you know, just like in a, in a similar way. And I, I wasn't planning. I'm, I like this. We're trying to just go, you know, but, but, but that when, you know, when New York passed that gruesome law, mm. uh, crossing a lot, killing babies up to the time of birth, and they cheered, you know, you remember it made news all over. They cheered, you know, now they're, by the way, it's now it's spreading around the, in these other days. But so, so the governor of New York, he's not governor anymore, but he, he, to celebrate, this great act of killing children, he orders the harbinger, the tower, to be lit up pink to celebrate the, the death of babies. Now, now, one year, you know, what happened? Uh, a year later, th that happened. I mean, and that, a year later, COVID comes on America. The first case called patient zero. You know, it's it was patient zero. I, and it made... The next day, it makes headlines all over America, COVID case in America, okay? There's a date next to those headlines. The date is January 22nd. It's one year to the day that New York crossed the line and lit up the harbinger. And it's also the same date that America legalized the killing of children in by the Supreme Court. And there's so much to that. We'll go into it. But like, you, may, like you put this all together. It's just yeah. mindless. Well, Jonathan, where, where can people find out more about you, yeah. particularly, you know, the material you've written? And especially let's let's talk about the film again. Yeah. Well, to get the movie is just remember, it's the harbingers of things to come. It's going to be it's May 12th, Thursday night, one night only uh, to find out. Just go to and there's some place like where we are in New Jersey. It's it's sold out. Uh, but 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 you can even have them make more screens and and have it in your area if they don't. But um, to get to find out, go to harbingersofthingstocome.com harbingersofthingstocome.com you can google it too and you should get a site where it's going to tell you where it's you put in your zip code where it's playing um and you can reserve a seat you can even you know again book a place that maybe it's not even playing um and and again but i encourage you to uh to get to bring out people who need to know the lord bring out people who need to wake up even if they're believers wake up but bring out people it's going to be a prophetic explosion what just one night so you, you miss that night is it may 12th after that night for 30 days they'll they're going to have they're going to have allow churches to have their own you know showing of it um so but that's there so um yeah and uh um uh and then as far as for as far as me, um, and, and by the way, you guys, I'm sure you have it because you've always been um, to get. You can get the Harbinger too, um, I believe, from Prophecy Watchers. Mm -hmm. So check it out; they'll probably tell you about that. And there's a special, um, uh, uh, there's a special resource, a very special uh, that you guys have. Um, that's called the Harbinger Two Uncensored, which is eight DVD discs where you're seeing things that nobody's going to see because it's uncensored. I mean, it's things that I couldn't even put in the book. And and you guys have a lot. There's been a lot of interest. So it's, it's the Harbinger 2 uncensored 8 DVD. Um, so um, that's there. And then to get in touch, just just so you know, um, I don't know if the, the, the rapture is happening. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I'm still here and you're still here. The the ministry is Hope of the World. I mean, we're at, by the way, if you're ever up in, in uh, New Jersey, New York City, that we have the Jerusalem Center, you know, on Friday and Sundays, we invite you all out. We, you are, you know, we are sisters, uh, ministries to you guys, uh, prophecy watchers. We, we go back a long way, by the way. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but at the ministry, uh, the outreach ministry I do is hope of the world. Um, and that is a ministry to get the gospel out to the world and compassion projects. And that's where all my teachings are mysteries. And we send out free gifts and free mysteries, uh, by just writing it. Just remember it's hope of the world.org and we'll send you free, free stuff right away. Um, and, um, and of course there's YouTube, John Lincoln, YouTube. I, I don't even know how to work these things, but I'm on there. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, John Lincoln, Twitter, whatever, whatever that is. Uh, if you do that, I'm there. Hey, Jonathan, this has been a great time. And, and if you don't mind, we're going to stop here because we have so much more to discuss. But we want to kind of do this as a part one. So um, appreciate if you would come back. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so if you were watching today, I mean, this is a great film. Again, I have had the opportunity to see a, a screen in advance of this. It's incredible. You will walk away and say, what are the odds? What are the chances of this? So be on the lookout for part two, which is coming. And we will see you next time.